it's been some time since I delved deeper into the Trail series, and if the outpouring of fan requests is anything to go by, it's been far too long in fact. So let's fix that. Welcome back to the Game Collection, I am Super Derek, and this is Trails of Cold Steel. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is a role-playing game developed by Nihon Falcom Corporation and published by Xseed Games in North America. Development started sometime around 2010 and was released in 2013 in Japan and 2015 in North America for the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. Trails of Cold Steel is the first entry in a new arc within the larger Kiseki or Trails series, a series known for its complex and engaging storylines, memorable characters, and deep gameplay systems. Toshiro Kondo was a fan of Nihon Falcom's works, in particular The Legend of Heroes 3, The White Witch. His love of the company's games led him to create a fan site during his time in college and eventually landed himself a job within Falcom, and then eventually finding himself the president of the company when the founder stepped down in 2007. Kondo had already taken many risks in starting the Trails in the Sky series, eventually finding success. As a follow-up, he took another risk in releasing the Crossbell series rather than continuing the Sky series, each risk in turn taking the series to greater new heights. But could Kondo lead the team to do it again? The risks this time would be greater than ever as they abandoned the familiar characters, diverted all development resources in 2013, and put them into bringing the Kiseki series into a more expensive, fully polygonal world for the first time as the only game they'd release all year. Trails of Cold Steel follows Rein Schwarzer over the course of his first six months attending Thor's military academy within the Erebonian Empire. It doesn't take long for Rein to realize on his first day that he and a few of his classmates aren't exactly wearing the same standard white school uniform of the nobility, nor the green school uniform of the lower class students. Instead, Rein stands out like a sore thumb in his red school issued uniform. It is soon revealed that Reen and his fellow red-clad students are all part of a special experimental class known as Class 7, a class without caste boundaries, who would be testing the new Arcus unit ornaments and going on regular field studies to the various cities and settlements across the land, performing tasks, defeating monsters, and generally learning about the country from all of its various angles while they learn to navigate the complexities of this world and to find their own place within it. But why? Because Trails of Cold Steel is the beginning of a new arc, expect a relatively slow start. The Trails series is known for its meticulous world crafting, which sets the stage upon which this story plays out. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you immediately can tell that neither was Erebonia. However, with the large new cast of Class 7 to introduce, you might be surprised it only takes about 10 minutes before combat begins. That's because, smartly, Trails of Cold Steel borrows a feather from the cap of the Crossbell arc, starting the game in medias res, exploring a climactic moment from later in the game without any context to immediately give you a taste of things to come. It's fast, fun, effective, and it leaves you with a cliffhanger before the game begins the arduous task of giving the players the context and reasons to care. The story of Cold Steel is a slow burn, which is not to say that it's boring, it maintains a relatively consistent level of fun and intriguing, especially if you have an interest in learning about this side of the continent of Zemuria. The fact that it takes place within a militaristic European or even vaguely German-inspired nation on the heels of a technological revolution helps with this quite a bit, at least for me. And the fact that the preceding games have spoon-fed me enough lore and context to understand some of the finer points of the political atmosphere surrounding the events has me primed to enjoy every new detail. This added background makes each new development, however mundane it may seem at face value, feel like an intricate Rube Goldberg machine of cascading repercussions that sends my mind buzzing with theories and speculation. This all acts as the perfect backdrop for some of the central themes of Cold Steel, of power and corruption, social class and inequality. One of the aspects of Trails of Cold Steel that gave me some pause was the fact that the game takes place within a military academy. 
Essentially, the students of Class 7 are of high school age in a cadet program of sorts. However, in between their field studies, day-to-day -day life feels like it could have been at any other Japanese high school setting. I wondered if and when the fact that this was a military academy would become relevant to the story, and to what degree. What about this setting would separate this monster-fighting squad of teenagers from another monster-fighting squad of teenagers in Persona, or Mighty Morphing Power Rangers for that matter? The answer to that question started to rear its head a substantial part of the way through the game, but I suspect this aspect of the game's setting has not yet been fully explored by the end of this entry in the series, and I wonder how and when loyalties will be tested, and if those bonds of friendship can withstand the strain. And that's something that I gradually came to care about over the course of the game, as I gradually grew to care about all well, most of the members of Class 7 throughout its duration. I was skeptical that a single title could get me emotionally invested in each of these characters. And while I had a few particular favorite characters, such as Fee, Sarah, Toa, and Crow, I even ended up liking pretty much everyone else. Except for one character who ended up feeling kind of like uh, Cousin Oliver to me. I'm sure they have redeeming qualities. Surely they must. And any time that a game can do that for so many characters over the course of its 100 hour duration has definitely got something special going for it. And the English voice cast of Cold Steel were instrumental as part of that something special, no doubt. It's worth noting that the original PlayStation 3 and Vita releases of Cold Steel had fewer voice acted lines than the PS4 remaster that I enjoyed. And even so, my only possible complaint about the voices of Cold Steel is the fact that there wasn't quite enough of it. There were a couple of scenes, for instance, where a character had no voice acting, sandwiched in between lines that were voice acted. Probably just an oversight, but it was not a huge problem for me. Similar to its predecessors, Cold Steel features two main kinds of gameplay. There are, of course, the combat mechanics, which I'll dive into shortly, and there's also the task-based quest system. That quest system originated in Trails in the Sky and has been maintained through the Crossbell games and makes a return in Cold Steel as a way to both drive the story forward and to offer time-sensitive side quests to players looking to get a bit more out of the game in exchange for gear, money, or perhaps even the greatest reward of them all. Sweet, juicy lore. Oh, and academic points, which will increase your academic rank in class. You know, it's one of those kinds of just extra things, but you don't want to not get the S rank at the end of the chapter, do you? Do you? I mean, sure, it's optional and doesn't really mean anything in the long run, but if it makes life harder for Toa, it's not really an option anymore, is it? Of course not. It should also be mentioned that Trails of Cold Steel once again changes up the combat system relatively extensively, as we've come to expect with each new arc in the series. While it still feels distinctively Trails-like, the system further removes itself from the combat grid system that existed in previous entries. However, this transition feels a bit more subtle than you might expect coming from the Crossbell arc, which rarely displayed the grid outside of choosing exactly where to place characters during combat. Otherwise, attack areas and effects are still represented by lanes and circles outlined during combat when choosing what to do, so Cold Steel will feel very familiar and intuitive to veterans working their way forward chronologically. However, what will feel completely new is the newly introduced linking system that allows two participants in combat to use their Arcus units to sort of synchronize their attacks. At least, that's the explanation in-game, but what this means for players is that these linked up characters can bestow extra follow-up attacks to each other following a critical hit, or maybe jump in front of an enemy to protect their linked up partner. The kind of things linked up companions can do for each other change and expand in scope as their link levels increase, to include things like deadly blows, which is when your initial attacker will follow up a follow-up attack in the event that that deadly blow would finish off the enemy, for example. Where the link system becomes even more tactical is with the consideration of the new unbalanced feature, which essentially means that some enemies are weak to different types of melee attacks. Attacking with these advantaged types of physical attacks have a chance of causing an unbalance, which means attacks of that type have a chance of causing critical hits, and in turn, a possible follow-up attack from a linked combatant. 
This all adds up to a fun system that encourages players to use the system to build up a momentum to completely steamroll your opponents. Trails of Cold Steel breaks with some of the more common tropes that featured these kinds of elemental systems though, in that no single character is particularly strong or weak in a given horrible element. Instead, each character is wildly customizable by equipping each with up to seven quartz gems that can grant the character one or many arts to draw from during combat, and in some cases, a smattering of stat boosts aside. None of your characters are going to be pigeonholed into being the healer, the fire guy, the ice magic queen, etc. Instead, each character is essentially as customizable as you have the time to put into it. If you find it fun to min-max your character loanouts nearly to the point of breaking the game, let me tell you, there are a good number of ways you can approach that within Trails, and each one is just as much fun as the next. Want a dodge tank who reprises every attack with a critical hit and a follow-up attack from their linked companion? Done! Want a behemoth who chunks off half the boss's health on their first turn? Oh yeah, you can do that. Want a glass cannon who can nuke the map from orbit using their magic? How about someone who has the ability to take all of the turns for themselves, giving the enemy none? Just say the word. Now some people might think that this system is ripe for abuse, and to an extent maybe it is, but the process of building up these characters doesn't happen all at once, and the process is extremely fun to just eke out a few more points of evasion here, or a few extra points of attack power there. And when you finally have that perfect character built out, it feels like you've earned it, and that's a feeling a guy could get used to. This eventually moves the meta of combat from just a slog of who can hit who hardest the longest, and instead transforms the game into a question of how do I leverage the system to overcome this new kind of barrier? The Upshot is an incredibly fun and addicting gameplay loop, with the drawback being that you will sometimes have to put a lot of extra thought and time into giving who which pieces of armor, weapons, quartz, gems, and accessories. And with your team consisting of four characters in the front row with a back row that you can switch in and out on the fly, you're likely to find yourself diving into menus for minutes at a time. The Empire of Erebonia is the first one to be rendered into what feels like a fully 3D dimensional space. Constrained somewhat by the PlayStation Vita's hardware limitations, the visuals do not exactly take full advantage of the PlayStation 3's hardware, nor the PlayStation 4, and especially not the PlayStation 5's hardware, which I used to capture the footage for this review. But aesthetics and graphical fidelity aren't one and the same, and while that graphical fidelity isn't really anything to write home about, the aesthetics… well, they're okay. But if this were a PlayStation 2 title, y'all would probably have been really impressed, I think. And if you enjoyed PlayStation 2 titles, you'll feel right at home here. But if you were looking for something groundbreaking, let's be honest, you wouldn't have made it this far into the review. What Trails of Cold Steel does accomplish, though, for the first time, is conveying an immersive sense of scale in comparison to the Land of Crossbell or the Kingdom of Liberal. Erebonia feels very large. Cities feel like cities. The Nord Highlands are huge open grasslands with various points of interest. For a first in the series of its kind, I think this was the greatest step forward. This does come at a cost, though. In the games leading up to Cold Steel, each game was mostly traversable on foot from one edge of the country to the other. In fact, the Bracers of Trails in the Sky made it a point of walking to each place on foot for the first time in order to gain a better understanding of the land and its inhabitants. Class 7 ain't a Bracer Guild though, and they take the train. A lot. Uh, pretty much exclusively, in fact. Kinda makes you wonder why they didn't call it Rails the Cold Steel, am I right? In doing this, the land feels less like an interconnected land and more like a series of hubs that you travel between. The game does at least take some pains to make the train rides feel like they take a long time to get through though, even if they actually don't. Often these moments of quiet are set aside for developing interpersonal relationships between Reen and the various members of Class 7, and also the relationships between the members of Class 7 themselves. Punctuated by games of Blade, a card game of trying to get the highest point value deck but with swords, mirrors, and wands, is a pretty fun distraction all in all. They also serve another purpose that's new to the Trail series. Character links are essentially a third gameplay mechanic that will draw a lot of comparisons to contemporary Persona titles. On certain free days when you're not out on field studies, Reen will have the ability to spend time with other members of Class 7, experience date-specific events, play a role in his friend's successes or failures, 
and just generally exist as a person living in the world rather than some character model the player moves around within the world to affect it. Unlike the Persona series though, not a lot of guesswork is involved in picking the right responses. There's no extra persona to equip that you have to use at just the right points, and not every relationship leads to romance, though some might. All of this is to say that if Persona wasn't up your alley, don't discount trails just yet, because while they accomplish similar goals using similar methods on the surface, there's a distinct difference between the two. Yeah, I might get some pushback from some viewers for saying this, but Reen's personality is a major reason that Cold Steel is as successful as it is. I've read before that Reen is a self-insert kind of character, the kind made to be a certain blend of bland and boring that allows players to imagine themselves in his shoes, the kind of character who doesn't make big decisions that might clash with the player's sensibilities, taking them out of the fantasy. And while there may be some hints of truth to that statement in certain regards, there is absolutely no comparison to the way this is done in the Persona titles, where your character does not speak, does not make their own decisions, who you are literally meant to name after yourself, first and last names. That aspect of Persona games makes those dating sim mechanics feel way more personal, and that might make some people feel a bit less comfortable. Reen, though, for all of his bland personality accusations, does have a personality. He does make his own decisions, he speaks of his own accord, has a strong sense of justice, banters with his teacher, and truly exists within the world. And that is a huge difference that could be all the difference to some people who might otherwise want to steer away from a game featuring character links because of their experience with Persona. Completionists won't be super happy to hear that you can't experience all of the events on your first playthrough though, due to the limited time in a day. The restrictions is alleviated though in subsequent playthroughs thanks to the new Game Plus option. By the way, just as a side note, I do love Persona. I've reviewed all of the numbered entries, and I do realize that some of those things I mentioned are a plus for many of you out there. I'm just using Persona as a point of contrast because it's something that so many people have become familiar with over the years. Anyway, getting back to Cold Steel, I wouldn't say that on normal difficulty that this game posed a terrible challenge. Having played earlier entries in the series, though for newcomers I could see these character loadouts feeling like a lot to keep track of all at once. For me, the only thing I kept forgetting to do up until the end of the game was establishing combat links between characters. There are difficulty modes though that can make life easy breezy or downright nightmarish, and the tutorials provided early in the game do a pretty good job of introducing game mechanics to newcomers, and mercifully taking the training wheels off nearly immediately for veterans. The music of Trails of Cold Steel, as with pretty much every Falcom game, is another high point of the game, with a diverse and memorable soundtrack that perfectly enhances each moment's mood and tone. Composed by Falcom's sound team, JDK, the tracks range from sweeping orchestral pieces to more intimate character themes, all of which are expertly crafted and add greatly to the game's atmosphere. The battle themes in particular are standout tracks with fast-paced and energetic compositions that perfectly match the intensity of combat. I mentioned before that I played this game using the PlayStation 4 port on my PlayStation 5. Because of that, I should note that I did encounter a single bug during my playthrough when displaying an image overlay during an in-game cutscene. But it might play into your considerations about which system you play the game on. Currently, the PC version is likely the cheapest version that is most accessible to most players and has a modding community that can even improve the game's textures, but I'm a physical games collector, so PlayStation 4, with all of its additional voice acting, was the version that I went with. The PAL Territory release by Marvelous is a region-free one and was far less expensive than the US release for PS4, which was exclusively sold in a steelbook case. So did Kondo's gamble pay off for Trails of Cold Steel? The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel was a well-crafted role-playing game that offers a deep and customizable combat system and immersive, detailed world to explore. While the game's visuals may not be groundbreaking, they do not detract from the overall experience. Players who enjoy complex storylines and character development will find much to love in this game, and its deep customization options provide ample replay value. These all factored into Trails of Cold Steel achieving even greater heights than ever before in the Trails series and started breaking the Trails series into the mainstream consciousness of JRPG fans around the globe. 
I think it's safe to say at this point in time that this gamble paid off in spades. In a 2016 interview with PlayStation Lifestyle, Kondo said, The Trails series is often singled out for not concluding its stories, but that in turn allows us to make the overall story and world as large as they are, which I don't think is common for a typical JRPG. And I can conclude that holds true for Trails of Cold Steel, ending on an incredible cliffhanger that demands that I continue playing the next entry in the series. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is a strong entry in the Kiseki series and is a worthwhile experience for fans of role-playing games. True works of art are works of love. They take an incredible amount of time, effort, and risk, especially for small outfits like Falcom. Sometimes these risks can pay off, and in the end, I'd say Kondo's gambles have been worth every shot. And Trails of Cold Steel was no exception. It's an incredibly heartfelt game that gives the player back every bit as much as they put into it. And that's why it's got a spot in the game collection. The Game Collection is a viewer-supported show. Consider becoming a patron for early access and higher quality downloads of reviews like these, special Discord roles, and exclusive discounts on merch. Thank you for watching.